So this is chapter three, section two, and like I told you, in section one, everything that we covered was done graphically. You use your protractor. Now we're going to learn how to do uh, all of the same. How do you draw or find the resultant vector from all these other vectors you draw? They don't have to be necessarily to scale. It helps if you can get it relatively to scale, but we're going to learn how to solve for the resultant mathematically. Uh, we've already talked about X and Y axis most of the time on your X and Y axis, especially if it's like a north, south, east, west, you start where the origin is. And we bring in uh, for this the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function. Who knows what the Pythagorean theorem is? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Very good. What about the tangent function? Uh, that is... Have y'all done sine, cosine, tangent? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you just don't remember? That's okay. That's okay. Uh, we'll look at it right now. Pythagorean theorem. There it is right there. Uh, what is special about the Pythagorean theorem? What do you have to have before you can use that? You've got to have a right triangle. So don't forget that. Got to have a right triangle. So everybody's good with that. You know that by heart. I expect you to know that by heart. It is in your graphing calculators you have. I'm sure a lot of you already have this as one of your programmed equations. You just got to go find it. Tangent function. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. I'm going to go ahead and give you sine, cosine, and tangent so that you don't forget in case you just have to be reminded. Uh, if you're doing sine of an angle, anybody remember what that is? OH. What is the mnemonic y'all learned? Opposite Um. I pronounce everything differently. Stephen already knows this, but we learned it as Sakatoa. Um, and then sine, cosine, and tangent, Pythagorean theorem. I'm sure I pronounce that maybe a little different than y'all. Uh, but sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of your angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. Does everybody know what I mean by opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? Anybody not? The longest leg of your right triangle. I do expect you to have those either memorized or in your calculator because for the rest of this trimester, we will use it a lot. All of this. Sample problem. An archaeologist climbs the Great Pyramid in Gaza, Egypt. Its height is 136 meters. Its width is 230 meters. What's the magnitude and direction of displacement of the archaeologist after she climbs from the bottom of the pyramid to the top? Friends. So let's add in something here. No, go back. Um, if I'm going to draw this, and it's talking about a pyramid, everybody knows what a pyramid looks like, right? No. So there's the pyramid, and you can create a right triangle from this pyramid. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it right down the middle. There it is. You what? <laughs> so if we're looking at this as far as what's given, hey, it says the pyramid's height is 136 meters. So this leg is 136 meters. And then it says its width is 230 meters. That was the entire width was 230 meters. So how long is this bottom short leg going to be? 
I just heard three different numbers. What is half of 230? Holy cow. You are struggling there. 115 meters. Now here's the question. It wants to know the magnitude and direction. So if this is our archaeologist and she is going to climb up to the top right here, we need to find out what the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is going to be the distance that she actually goes. And if they ask for displacement, that includes direction. So we also need to find that angle. So the hypotenuse, which is really your distance, and then your angle. What are we going to use to find the hypotenuse? Pythagorean theorem. So, I'm going to call it H, that's what we've still got. A squared plus B squared, what is my A? It doesn't matter which one it is, really. 136 squared and my B? 115. And my H, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a mathematical step here. I feel confident y'all can handle that. But instead of squaring my H, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, I know I have to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square root on the H. So y'all figure out what is the distance that she has to actually travel. So y'all calculated it. You got 178 meters. <laughs> now, <laughs> we're going to find the angle. Since we've gone over sine, cosine, and tangent, Based on, you've got all three legs here, it does not matter which one of those you decide to use at this point. Somebody tell me which one do you want to use? Tangent. tangent. Okay, tangent it is. What? <laughs> tangent theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. What's the opposite leg? This is my angle. 136. And what is my adjacent leg? 115. Now, in your calculator, do you know what to do at this point? You got to get tangent basically to the other side, right? So, theta is in yours, inverse tangent, 136 over 115. Make sure you know how to put it into your calculator properly. On our calculator, the ACT program has a triangle thing. If you have all three sides, you can plug it into the SSS formula. I need one other piece of information for my answer. So, we've got 178 meters at 49.8 degrees. How are you going to explain the direction? 49.8 degrees. Uh, he says up the pyramid, you could say uh, above ground. Okay. So, uh, there's several ways that you could put that, but I want you to put, well, how else am I going to describe this 49.8 degrees? And we just gave you a few options. So, this does go through and it explains how to do everything. We've already looked at that. Make sure our answers match 178, 49.8 degrees. Again, put something extra with that, above ground, above the horizontal. Either one of those would be fine. Resolving vectors into components. This is where it's going to get just a little bit harder. Uh, again, if you have uh, vectors resolving into components, this is when, um, what happens if you're not dealing with 90 degrees? It can be a little bit harder. So again, what's going to, and we'll get to an example where what if your vectors you have don't make a 90 degree triangle? And this one right here, they're just showing you how they, um, it's an example of a plane flying at 95 kilometers per hour. 20 degrees above what the horizontal would be considered or 20 degrees above the ground. Talks about the adjacent leg. 
Uh, typically, anything vertical is considered a y direction. Anything horizontal is considered an x direction. So it would help if you keep that in mind. That's what you've always done. We're not going to change that at this point. We've already talked about sine and cosine. Let's see if we want to watch this video. We're not going to watch the video because I would rather us just go ahead and talk about what we're going to do to resolve these. I would rather show you myself. So here's two different uh, vectors that are given. It says a plane travels 5 kilometers at an angle of 35 degrees and then 22 kilometers at an angle of 10 degrees compared to your new horizontal. They want you to find out the total displacement. Notice we do not have a 90 degree triangle here. And it's going to break it down for you. This is going to be important. Um, and this one right here, whenever you are looking at this, uh, that is considered the hypotenuse, but they're breaking it down into two different triangles first. They have this triangle. So there's one triangle. Here's one triangle. That'll give you 90 degrees. And then you have a new triangle right here. That also is a 90 degrees. So now you're going to be dealing with two different X legs and two different Y legs, and you've got to use those appropriately. And then your third triangle. Are you ready for the third one? Once you find your X and Y components of the light pink triangle and of the red triangle, then you can use that information to find your hypotenuse of the blue triangle which is now your third triangle. So you would have to resolve D1 and D2 into components in the X and Y. So you've got your right triangle to work with and once you find all of that information you can work with your larger uh, right triangle to find the hypotenuse that you originally needed. We will work through an example. Do y'all have any questions on this right here? Why? Because I said so. No. No. We're going to go on to an example problem. Are you ready? So here's our sample problem. Again, I'd rather you see um, how I work through this. I'll try to color code everything for you. I suggest you have out at least three different colored markers, highlighters, something to help you with this. A hiker walks 27 kilometers from her base camp at 35 degrees south of east. Then she walks 41 kilometers at 65 degrees north of east and discovers a ranger's tower. Find the magnitude and direction of her resultant displacement. Again, at this point, once we start drawing this, it does not have to be to scale but it helps if you keep things scaled somewhat appropriately, at least to your mind's eye. You ready? So first thing she does, again, if we have our standard XY coordinate system here, first thing the hiker walks 27 kilometers from her base camp at 35 degrees south of east. Here's south, here's east. If we go south of east, there's the 35 degrees we're talking about going south of our east line. And she's going to walk 27 kilometers. So we'll go ahead and draw that. That is 27. 
The next day, she walks 41 kilometers, 65 degrees north of east. So I'm going to put a dotted line. There's my new east line right here. And we want to go 65 degrees off of that. So we're going to be walking in this direction. And this time we are going 41 kilometers. So it definitely needs to be longer than our last leg. It was 27. This one is, stop it, 41. No, they do not have to be exact at this point. So this angle over here is 65 degrees, right? And now we've got to find displacement. So starting at my original point right here, we got to figure out what is my displacement. I'm going to put a D right there for displacement. Do we have a 90 degree angle? Right triangle. I mean, it almost looks like that is right there, but it is not. It is not, okay? Let me show you the triangles we're going to work with. Are you ready? So the first one we're going to work with This triangle right here, we're going to call that triangle A. The second one that we're going to work with this one right here, we're going to call it triangle B. And then the last one that we're going to work with, once we figure out <coughs> <clears throat> our components of A and then B we are going to work on this triangle that is going to be triangle C okay so again um, to get you started this resolving into vectors does not go away after this chapter. It doesn't go away after the next chapter, and it doesn't go away after the next chapter. So you've got to learn how to resolve components into vectors because we will apply it in different scenarios every time we learn something new. So make sure you pay attention. So let's go back to triangle A and start with it. For triangle A, we've got the hypotenuse, which is 27. Do we have any angles? The 90 degree. Anything else? Okay. This top one right here is 55 degrees. That angle is 55. Everybody see how we knew that was 55? Yep. So now, you know, those two have to add up to 90. And then what would the bottom angle be? Not saying we have to use it, but what would this bottom angle be? It would be 35 degrees. Okay? We need to figure out, we're going to call this we're going to call this x1 here and y1 here. So those are the components of triangle A we're working with, X1 and Y1. There is more than one correct way you can go about solving for this. So for triangle A, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to solve for X1, and I'm going to use the sine function. I'm going to use sine of, we said 55 degrees, sine of 55 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 
The opposite leg is that X1 we're looking for. Hypotenuse is 27. And then we solve for X1. Solve for X1. So what is X1 going to be equal to? Y'all get out your calculators. Tell me what. Okay. 22 kilometers. 22 kilometers. Now to solve for Y. Again, there is more than one way to do this. I'm going to stick with the same angle. And to stick with the same angle, we've got to use cosine of 55. Cosine of 55, that gives me Y1. No. That is Y1 over 27. So when you solve for Y1, what do you get? I heard 15 kilometers. I'm, I'm good with the 15. Okay? Y1 over 27. Who's got a question so far? Okay, moving on. Let's go to triangle B. Uh, looking at triangle B, again, we've got the 65 degrees there. We have our hypotenuse of 41. So if I want to find, we're going to call this X2. And this is Y2. So if you want to find X2 and use the 65 degrees, are we going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? Using the 65 degrees. Cosine. Cosine is 65. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is X2. Hypotenuse is 41. What does X2 end up being? Okay, we'll go with 17. And now to find Y2, we're going to use the sine function. Sine is 65 degrees. That gives us Y2. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 41. What does Y2 end up being? Say that again. 37 kilometers. So we have found our components of the two smaller right triangles that we're working with that we had enough information to find. Now, when we go to triangle C, to find the hypotenuse, which is D, okay, we need to know what our total X and total Y is going to be. So, for my X, how do I find that? X of my resultant, we'll call it XR, X for the resultant. What do I do with X1 and X2? Because I need this leg right here. You add them. So it's X1 plus X2. What about for my Y resultant? Subtract Y2 minus Y1. So without me doing all of that intermediate math there, what is my XR going to be equal to? 39 kilometers. And what is my YR going to be equal to? 22 kilometers. I'm leaving off all my units just for space right now. You can keep up with it on your own paper. Okay, now I've got my X and Y leg of that orange triangle, so we can go find D. Uh, that is displacement for our resultant vector. That's where we use Pythagorean theorem. So DR squared equals the X leg is 39, the Y leg is 22, and you solve for the resultant displacement. So figure out what that is and give me an answer. Okay, so I'm going to put down 45 kilometers. 45 kilometers there. Do we need to figure out anything else? You got to figure out the angle. So let's figure out this angle right here. That's going to be above our east line. What do you want to use to find out that angle? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How about we use <laughs> how about we use the tangent function? Okay. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. What's the opposite 
of that theta. 22. 22, that's our y. And the adjacent is the x leg, which is 39. So what does our angle end up being? Remember, you're going to have to do second tangent on your calculator. I heard 29 degrees. And what wordage will we put after 29 degrees? North of east. So everything that is circled here is your answer. You had to go through, and I left out a little bit of that intermediate math stuff, okay? I didn't write down what the Pythagorean theorem was. This is to save space. Do we have to write down the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, I want to see everything.